Well, as we head toward winter, the risks surrounding house fires increase what you can do to keep your family safe. The drought continues and crews are still keeping an eye on several brush fires throughout our area. The latest from Polk County. And the latest on some very tragic house fires as well in the Tennessee Valley at 6 o'clock. Let us say good morning, Tennessee Valley. So glad you're tuned in to Channel 3 Eyewitness News today. And I, I'm Latrice Curry. <laughs> you have, were you going to say you were Latrice I, or were you going to say you're David Carr? Oh, Lord have mercy. This is going to be a rough hour. <laughs> I'm Monday. John Martin. Uh, today <laughs> is Monday, October 24, 2016. We're going to check for David Carr's. I'm so sorry for looking at his forecast. Okay. It's Monday. It's all minute. right. Southern Chattanooga firefighters got together to make one birthday boy very happy. We'll have this story coming up in just a little bit. And right now, we are going to throw it over to... I'm David Cards. I, I'm David Cards. <laughs> <laughs> me, 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 me. <laughs> oh, yeah. It is Monday, is it not? Uh, yeah. Yeah, quick look outside. It's a pretty nice start <laughs> the weekend or to the week. It's uh, 48 degrees in Chattanooga, 49 in Cleveland. Oh, Murphy, you're 35 degrees. And uh, Gravid Jackets in Athens, 39, 41 in Dalton. Day planner gets us up into the upper 70s and low 80s. We'll top out at 81 this afternoon. Lots of sunshine through the afternoon as well. No big changes through the week, although maybe a sprinkle or two midweek. We'll talk about the chances of that and uh, just give you the latest coming up in just a few minutes, guys. All right, David, thank you so much. Uh -huh. Well, breaking news this morning, six people died in a house fire late Sunday night. Yeah, Chattooga County Sheriff Mark Schrader says two adults and four children were killed. The home was off Old Highway 27 and Airport Road north of Tryon. Sheriff's investigators at the State Fire Marshal's Office are investigating the cause of the fire. Well, throughout the Tennessee Valley, firefighters say we are seeing more house fires as the temperatures start to drop. Yeah, some officials say space heaters and other heat sources are to blame, and a few of those heaters are to blame for nearly 20% of all home fires. That's just behind cooking. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Tim Pham has what first responders want you to know to keep your family safe. Good morning, Tim. Well, good morning to you. It was a busy weekend for firefighters. Firefighters responded to this home on uh, Dodson Avenue in Chattanooga, where a mother and her six children were able to escape a home fire. They tell us that uh, that a container placed too close to a heat source is to blame uh, for this fire. Most home fires are reported during the winter months, but fire officials are already reminding everyone to use caution around heating equipment. This weekend alone, there were at least four house fires and for some firefighters they say heaters and other heat sources were the cause. It's why the Red Cross volunteers are urging everyone to take precaution. You need to know what your escape from every room in the home would be and where you'll meet up with your family so that you know that everyone made it out safe. The Red Cross says little things can prevent big fires, especially when it comes to portable heaters and other heating equipment, such as keeping all flammable objects away from heat sources and going over an emergency plan with your family. Above all, they encourage everyone to make sure that they have installed and working smoke detectors. Over the next couple of weeks, the Red Cross will be kicking off their home safety campaign. Uh, they'll be going around to homes, making sure that people have working smoke alarms. If you want more information on that, you can visit our website, WRCBTV.com. We also have other tips on how you can make sure your home is safe. Reporting live in Chattanooga, Tim Pham, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. All right, Tim, thank you so much for that live update. So important as we see what's going on with these house fires this morning and over the weekend. Well, the victims from the city's latest double shooting have now been identified. Chattanooga police say a man and a woman were hurt on Friday in a drive-by shooting on Walden Avenue. Clarence Ross and LaShawn Witherow were injured, but also say they're okay, expected to be all right. Right now, police aren't sure who shot them. If you have any information that can help investigators, call Chattanooga Police. Later today, a judge will decide if a man convicted in a Hamilton County cold case will receive a new trial. Well, earlier this year, a jury convicted Billy Hawk of killing Johnny Max Sawyer. For more on this, let's go to Michelle Heron for the very latest. She is downtown following this story. Good morning, Michelle. Well, good morning to you. In this motion, Billy Hawk's attorney lists all of the reasons why his client deserves an acquittal or at least a new trial. Now, most of the reasons that are listed argue that there wasn't enough evidence in the case and it 
that pointed to Billy Hawk's guilt. Now, these reasons were presented to a judge last month, and today we should hear that judge's decision. You may remember it took jurors seven hours to find Billy Hawk guilty in the 1981 death of uh, Johnny Max Sawyer, whose body was found in a barrel in Lake Chickamauga. The investigator at the time said potential witnesses wouldn't talk to police and they were in fear of their own safety. That's when the case went cold until the newly formed cold case unit began investigating Sawyer's death, which led to a conviction. And we will be inside of the courtroom today. And as soon as the judge announces his decision, we will be updating you guys on air and online. But for now, reporting live in downtown Chattanooga, I'm Michelle Heron, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. All right, Michelle, thank you so much for that live update. Well, this morning, Polk County crews are monitoring a fi fire in the Clemmer Rock Creek area. So that's near Highway 64 and Highway 30. Officials say smoke was reported at the U.S. Forest Service Center around 515 Sunday night. So far, over five acres have burned. Two helicopters and one plane were used to help put out that fire. No one was hurt and no buildings are close to those flames. It's a similar situation in Fort Payne, Alabama. Little River Canyon National Preserve and multiple teams from other agencies are fighting a fire that has burned more than 300 acres in the Martha's Falls area. Now that's south of Alabama Highway 35. Officials say the dry conditions are to blame for how quickly these fires are spreading. And David Carnes, you know, we, we had a little bit of rain last week, but the whole area, I mean, that was not yeah. nearly yeah. enough to, yeah. to help out this situation. The, the drought is continuing to worsen. The little bit of rain that we had, nothing. And even though we're looking at cool, comfortable temperatures, beautiful sure. fall colors, be careful with the cooler air, people turning on the heater. House fires are a big risk. Wildfires are a big risk. It's just kind of a, a risky thing out there right now. So just be aware, be very aware of that. 48 degrees Chattanooga, 49 in Cleveland, 35 Murphy and 39 in Athens. Space heaters, I do want to mention that. The big thing, a lot of times we can get lulled into a uh, sense of security. The, the space heater may have features on it that provide safety, but just be smart with them. 81 degrees Chattanooga, 81 in Dalton, and 79 for a high in Cleveland. It is going to be warm today. The average high ranges from 68 to 70 degrees through the week. We are going to stay way above that, even as we cool from 81 to 75 on Wednesday. That's still about five or six degrees above average. So nice and warm uh, afternoons, comfortable mornings, and we will have more coming up in just a moment. Right now, though, let's head over to John Martin for your up-to-date traffic. Good morning, John. Hey, good morning. Let's take a live look outside at 6 seven on your Monday morning. This is my favorite one from Boy Scout Road to Highway 58 via Highway 153. Your drive time about 13 minutes this morning. This is a live picture 153 north of Chickamauga. Not a whole lot going on. We've been checking our T.Smartway Smartway network. Also, uh, no accidents to report that are going to slow you down on your major highways and byways. But of course, we will keep you up to date right here on Channel 3. Latrice. All right. Thanks so much, John. Well, a nine year old boy fighting cancer was able to forget about medicine and treatment at least for a few hours last week. Jaden Patton had to spend his ninth birthday in the hospital, but his party is one he'll always remember. Thanks to some special guest Chattanooga firefighters organized a birthday surprise. Jaden had birthday cake, superhero presents and balloons. But the highlight for Jaden and his friends was sitting in the fire truck, switching on those lights and sirens. Good for him. Yes. Glad he had a great birthday. Well, coming up on Eyewitness News today, the Falcons went head to head against the Chargers in overtime at the Georgia mm -hmm, Dome. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a rough weekend for sports if you're <laughs> it a football fan. It was fit. in this area. Yeah, Jill Jelnick's going to have a look at all your sports coming up in just a little bit.
Well, a Bradley County school is celebrating a $50,000 technology grant. Students at Taylor Elementary will soon have new laptops. The school was able to obtain new laptops for all fourth and fifth graders thanks to the grant from the Leonore Annenberg School Fund for children. Through our area's public education foundations earlier this year, Lakeside Academy in Hamilton County received a similar grant. All right, time now to check your sports headlines. Rough week for sports hmm. fans in the area, but the Mox had a good game. Here's yeah. Jill Jelnick. Looking to rebound from their fourth quarter loss last week against the Seahawks, the Atlanta Falcons had the lead for the majority of their game at their home field yesterday, but San Diego's charge just wouldn't go away. The NFC South leading Falcons dominated the first half, putting up 21 points in the second quarter alone, including this 30-yard run by Tevin Coleman, who finds a gap and goes all the way to the end zone for the Atlanta score. Falcons led 27-17 at the break, but San Diego makes their biggest charge the second half. Down 10 points in the fourth, Phillip Rivers finds Melvin Gordon his third touchdown of the game. Chargers down just three points. Then with 23 seconds left in the game, San Diego makes a field goal to tie the game 30-30, but then the Falcons with a chance to win it here, and they miss right. And to go in overtime, we go. It's now fourth and one for the Falcons. Coach Dan Quinn decides to go for it. Devontae Freeman with the ball, and he doesn't get the first down, and it's the Chargers' ball. And sure enough, Josh Lambeau comes up clutch with a 42-yard field goal to win the game for San Diego, 33-30 that final. Meanwhile, over at Nissan Stadium yesterday, the Titans looked to break their nine-game losing streak to the Indianapolis Colts, and they almost had it, too. At the start of the fourth quarter, Titans tied it up here thanks to Marcus Mariota's pass to Delaney Walker in the end zone 2020 ball game. A field goal then gave Tennessee the three-point lead, but the Colts responded with a 70-yard drive that was capped off with a touchdown pass from Andrew Luck to Jack Doyle which made it 27-23 with two minutes remaining. Mariota would have one last chance to make something happen, but the ball is knocked loose and Robert Mathis picks it up and takes it 14 yards for the scoop and score. Colts win their 10th straight game over the Titans, 34-26 that final. The Titans now have a short week this week as they get ready to host the Jacksonville Jaguars Thursday night. All right, that's it for sports. I'm Jill Jelnick. I hope you have a marvelous Monday. Man, tough loss yeah, man. for both Titans and the Falcons yesterday. All right, after being cursed by a billy goat and crushed by decades of disappointment, the Chicago Cubs are at long last headed back to the World Series. It was a scene, man. This weekend, Kyle Hendricks outpitched Clayton Kershaw as the Cubs won their first pennant since 1945, beating the Los Angeles Dodgers 5-0 in Game 6 of the NL Championship Series. As you imagined, <laughs> yes, it was a wild celebration at Old Wrigley. The Cubs will open the World Series at Cleveland on Tuesday. Now, here is the scene right here. This is the double play to end it all in 108 years, wow. hopefully <laughs> over. Uh, they are World Series bound. Look, there's Eddie Vedder over there. Bill Murray was crying. Man, wow. it was crazy. It was. You know what? More people are interested in the storyline, I think, because baseball had dropped some in the ratings. Mm -hmm. so but more people are interested in the storyline with the Cubs, the Cubs being in the World Series. Baseball is so happy that the Cubs are in the World Series. Do you know how much those tickets at Wrigley are going for? Oh, yeah, I heard. $996,000 a seat. It's crazy. They were talking about that this morning. Earlier today, I heard that. Go yes. Cubs. All right, coming up on Eyewitness News today, David will be here with a look at your forecast, and you don't have to pay anywhere nearly that to hear your forecast. No, it's free. Yes. Plus, <laughs> from Mont Eagle to McMinn County, we'll let you know if there are any problems on your morning commute.
Channel 3 Eyewitness Traffic is brought to you by CHM Memorial. CHM Memorial supports prostate health and encourages you to get a wellness check today. To find a physician near you, visit chmmemorialmedicalgroup.org. Hey, welcome back to 620 on this Monday morning. Let's take a live look at your morning commute. If you're headed from East Ridge to downtown drive time, about 16 minutes. This is a live picture right here at 75 and the 24 split. Nothing on the TDOT Smartway network that's showing you any slowdowns. We will keep you up to date right here on Channel 3. Now let's turn to David for a look at today's forecast. Good morning, David. John, good morning. Drought monitor showing extreme to exceptional drought conditions around the Tennessee Valley. We're going to see that continuing all week long. No relief in sight. Maybe, maybe one or two sprinkles by midweek again on Saturday, but chance of rain. Uh, very low. If we get anything, it's not going to be anything measurable anyway, and the drought will continue. We're 16.66 inches below our average rainfall at this point, and that number is going to get uh, above 17 inches before the week is done. Weather headline showing cool mornings, warm afternoons, little to no rainfall, and that is going to be the case each and every day this week. Nice, comfortable morning lows. This morning, we're at 48 in Chattanooga, Cleveland 47, Dalton 41, nice and chilly in Murphy at 35 and 39 in Athens uh, satellite and radar showing pretty clear skies through the afternoon but this morning. One or two clouds drifting through thin clouds though and Viper cast gives us sunshine this afternoon. This front yeah, don't worry about that. It's going to wash out. No big deal and high pressure is going to build in providing warm dry weather for the week. It'll slide off to the east ahead of a front that's going to move in toward the middle of the week. I think we'll see some clouds building Wednesday, Thursday, maybe into Friday also, but those clouds will not produce much. If any rain up at the rain chance at uh, about 20% for your Thursday and then Thursday night into Friday will begin to clear out. Heading into the weekend, another weak system moves through on Saturday. It could bring one or two showers, but again, the chance of rain very low, only 20% for Saturday also, and then we'll clear out on Sunday. I think for the uh, for the weekend, you're probably going to be okay with any outdoor activities you have. We'll just keep one eye extra on Saturday uh, to make sure that the rain behaves itself. But hey, rain at this point, even on Saturday, would be a good thing. Sunny skies, very warm today. The average high is 70. We're going to rock it up to 81 degrees during the afternoon. Sunny skies, and then a very pleasant evening with the overnight low dropping down to 48 under clear skies. And your storm alert seven day forecast mid to upper 70s Tuesday and Wednesday. Chance of a shower on Thursday, and then we dry out on Friday. Another small chance for another shower on Saturday, and then we clear out with good looking weather on Sunday. Mostly sunny skies, wildfire risk still high. If you're going to do some camping outdoors, maybe no wildfires, maybe no campfires, any of that, because uh, things are extremely dry around the Tennessee Valley now. Okay, be careful out there. Thanks, mm -hmm. David. Well, tis the season for all things fall. Lovely colors, pumpkins, and of course, Corn mazes on the farm. Yeah, so I was able to recruit Channel 3's very own Tim Pham and Tanisha Cordell to celebrate all things fall in this week's three in your town. We head to the River Maze in Polk County. in beautiful Benton, Tennessee. I'm here with uh, the world famous Tim Pham <laughs> and the world are famous is Tanisha, everybody. Tanisha Cordell. Uh, you guys have uh, kindly come with me to experience this corn maze. Uh, what are you excited about or apprehensive about? We, we don't know what you got us into I don't know or what to expect today, no. but we know we're going to have fun. It's going to be a Absolutely. lot of fun. Agriculture is the number one industry in Tennessee. And so many uh, individuals have gotten removed from realizing and they get to come out here and they get to experience uh, agriculture and food production as little children and they get to have fun. Joe Detzer takes pride in reintroducing That's folks to farming, no matter what level of experience they're coming from. Okay, why am I nervous? Oh, it's cold. They have hay rides and games and of course, animals. We have the barnyard where that you can see some of the prettiest turkeys you ever saw. And uh, of course some, some calves and uh, goats on the goat walk and sheep. And we built a pig palace this year. But the major draw of course, the corn mazes. Well, they're definitely gonna get corn fused. And I can tell you that there's more 
twists and turns in this maze than, than I think any we've cut out in 12 years. Siri, how do we get out of the corn maze? She didn't get that. <laughs> Where is the, my compass at, though? Where's the compass? Uh... But for Magellan and DeSoto here, it turns out they're nothing more than fields of frustration. I don't even have service. Okay. Help us. So perhaps a corn maze, not the best idea for us, but one thing we can yes. all agree on, picking pumpkins. It's all weird, I love it. Thank you so much. They're doing great things out here in Polk County and in all sincerity, at the end of the day, Tim, Tanisha, and myself had a great time and we really think you will too. They are, no, <laughs> they are they're city slickers is essentially what it was. Yeah, and uh, you put them in a corn maze. And I haven't heard from Tim Pham since then, so I think he's somewhere wandering around the Ocoee. So if you, could fi <laughs> if you find Tim Pham, uh, please FedEx him. Uh, back to the Channel 3 studio. We'd appreciate that. All right, looks like they had fun, though. That, that was a great, it was really a good time out there. We'll have more information on our website, but if you have a place we should visit or a special person we should talk to, send us an email or let us know on our Facebook page. All right, well, time now to take a look at our birthday salutes this morning. Congratulations and happy birthday to our Bojangles winner, Taylor Lynn Smith. Your mom, dad, and big sister Morgan love you a lot, and they want you to have a wonderful day. Love your picture there. Alrighty, a special wish and happy sweet 16th birthday, pretty young lady here. This is Madeline Author from Ocoee, Tennessee. It is great to hear from that area. Your family loves you a lot. Have a wonderful day. Sweet 16. Happy 11th birthday, Alyssa Deal. She's in the fifth grade at Copper Basin Elementary School. She loves to read, spend time outside, and going to Dollywood. <laughs> Glad to hear from our viewers in Copper Hill this morning, and uh, have a great day, Alyssa.